they said about, oh, we'll have to invade Japan and, a million, and we'll save a million. No, it was just untrue. The facts, we did not have to drop the bombs, even in order for that. But, the, but uh, there was, nobody knew what would happen if we didn't drop the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, although the Japanese were very, very, very close on the brink, brink, brink of surrender, but nobody knew what would happen. But we knew what would happen when we dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There's a sort of principle involved there. There's a kind of theory you can come out with there. And that is that in war, you see, the horror of the means is certain. The outcome is uncertain. And so when people tell you, oh, we, you know, we, we must bomb Afghanistan in order to win the war on terror, or in order to get the terrorists. Truth is, you don't know if you're going to get the terrorists, but you, in the meantime, the means you are using is you're bombing Afghanistan, you're invading Afghanistan, you're killing in Afghanistan more people than were killed in the Twin Towers by those terrorists, you're engaging in terrorism. You're engaging in terrorism now on the supposition that you are going to do something useful against terrorism in the future. But in fact, the result of bombing and invading Afghanistan is we created more terrorists. We antagonized more people. We aroused more hostility. And where does terrorism come from? It comes from a great reservoir of hostility that comes out of our foreign policy. And by the way, although this sounds like a dissonant view, it's a view that you will find in the official report of the 9-11 Commission. Now, nobody will read the report of the 9-11. Who reads reports, <laughs> right? Who reads reports that take up hundreds of pages? No, but this is the official report. I mean, these are very conservative people. This is Lee Hamilton. These are Congress people. But they're, in, they're reporting on 9-11 and the causes of 9-11. And in reporting on it, they say, let me see if I have it here. <laughs> we, uh, but uh, well, <laughs> I'm very good at, uh, at keeping records. Uh, <laughs> and really, really good at that. Uh, and. Uh, The, uh, yeah, they say the critical, critical reason for the terrorist acts on 9-11 was opposition to American military presence in the Middle East. Well, when people at the time said that, when when people dared to say at the time of 11, the time of 9-11, you know, that there might, it might be that that terrorist act was caused by the fact that the United States has been doing a lot of meddling in the Middle East, including military meddling, including um, sending troops and maintaining troops in Saudi Arabia, which happens to be Osama bin Laden's home country, you know, when people said that, that, hey, let's look at what the United States has been doing, the, re the response was, what, you're justifying 9-11? Well, of course not. Nobody's going to justify terrorist acts. But when terrorist acts are committed, it behooves an intelligent person not to immediately rush to, to bomb the first country you can possibly bomb, right, without retaliation, right? It's no big deal. It's not a very risky thing to bomb Afghanistan. We, we, we are generally a, a no-risk bombing country. Uh, we bomb places that cannot retaliate against us. But no, instead of uh, rushing to bomb Afghanistan, not knowing where Al-Qaeda was, not knowing where Osama bin Laden was, but by God, we've got to do something. <laughs> uh, instead of doing that, they sat down and said, hey, well, let, maybe we ought to examine the motives of these terrorists. What's behind it? Let's take a look at that. That might have been an intelligent thing to do. 
But intelligence is one of the last things you can expect to come out of the White House. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I want to talk not just about the war in Iraq because the war in Iraq will come to an end at some point. We're going to have to leave at some point. It's interesting. They say, oh, there will be civil war when we leave. Well, how do you know if we leave in five years or 10 years or 15 years, there won't be civil war when we leave? And in the meantime, many, many, many more people will die, just as it happened in Vietnam. Many, many more people died after we said, oh, we wouldn't leave because there'll be trouble. But one of the important things when you take arguments like that into consideration, when they say, oh, we must stay for this reason, one of the things you must take into account is whether the people who tell you this care about the things they tell you they care about. Do they really care about human life? Do they really care about democracy? The people who talk about, in Washington, talk about, we're going to bring democracy to Iraq. Do you think Bush cares about democracy in Iraq? Do you think Cheney cares about democracy in Iraq? I mean, it's laughable. Uh, one of the first principles that anybody studying history or studying political science or studying sociology or studying the world around you, one of the first principles you should understand is that the interests of the government are not the same as your interests. A very important principle to understand. If you think that the government has the same interest as you, well, then it seems natural for you to believe the government. They care about the same things as you do. But what if the government doesn't have the same interests? Is the interest of George Bush the same as the interest of the GI he sends to Iraq? I don't think so. I mean, here's where history comes in. You study the history of the United States. And, well, study the history of any country. You'll find that the interests of the government are not the interests of the people. And this is true not just in totalitarian states, but in so-called democratic states. When you start with that understanding, it will clear up a lot of things for you and will make you very wary of the things that you hear that come out of the seats of authority. Uh, and then you will understand why governments lie. Did you know that governments lie? <laughs> All the time. Well, not just our government, it's just the nature of governments. Why do they lie? Because they have to lie in order to keep power. If they told the truth, they'd be out of power in two weeks. So there's a, a connection between the difference of interest between the government and the people and the deceptions continually carried on by governments. So, yes, yeah, so I want to stop and, and, and talk about uh, principles and theories and ideas about war and about governments and about people uh, because I want us to think beyond the war in Iraq. Because what happens when the war in Iraq ends and then they wait 10 years or so until the American people have subsided in their anger against war <laughs> and uh, get us into another war? Maybe they won't even wait that long. If they can conjure up another enemy, if they can create another Hitler, you know, we, we, Hitler was very useful to us, especially after the war, because then we... Any time we could find a Hitler somewhere, or somebody who we could say was Hitler, boom, we can go to war. Noriega in Panama is Hitler. Go to war. <laughs> Panama is a big, threatening country. Uh, Saddam Hussein is Hitler. Well, Saddam Hussein is a tyrant, but is he Hitler? <laughs> but Hitler is useful. So we have to think, what happens when they, they try to get us into the next war? So we have to be, not just get us out of Iraq, we have to think about war in general. Yeah, we have, for that it helps to know some history. If you don't have history, um, it's as if you were born yesterday. If you were born yesterday, you're, you're a blank slate, right? You're an infant in the world. If, you're, if you don't have any history, 
than anybody in power